the end of a live. Thank you everyone for joining me this week. This week we're going to talk about autodidactism. It's a subject I'm very familiar with as personally I am an autodidact and I feel like I might live it at the highest level honestly because it really means a lot to me. It always has. Um, so today I want to talk to you guys about it and just give you a general understanding. We've had quite a few weeks together already. We had broken down all the way from what is a business all the way to the level where we're building you back up as a business now. I'm your host, Sean Patrick Maloney. I own Movementum Realty over here in Hanover, Massachusetts, service in both Massachusetts and Rhode Island, as well as Doth Company, a consulting business. Like social media information right there. Let's move on. All right, so what is it? So I want you to think about it for a sec. The word autodidact, autodidactism, what is it? So let's get the definition for it up on the screen here. So autodidactism or self-education, also self-learning and self-teaching is education without the guidance of a master, such as teachers and professors or institutions such as schools. Generally, autodidacts are individuals who choose the subject they will study, their studying material and their studying rhythm and time. Autodidacts may or may not have formal education and their study may be either a complement or an alternative to formal education. Many notable contributions have been made by autodidacts. So that comes from Wikipedia and that's the general definition of it. So basically long and the short of it is it's someone who enjoys learning, but they really don't enjoy learning at the pace of others. They don't really enjoy learning in big group settings. They tend to really want to be able to kind of focus their mastery, their studies, their guide, the way that they shape and you know, create their overall curriculum. Now, mind you, in this, it's not saying that they don't value teachers, because they certainly do. It's just that they're constantly changing which teachers and when they need them and when they feel like that person can continue to teach them, or if they feel like they've made it to the furthest point, they're going to make it with that teacher and they need to move to the next one. Same thing with materials. They might study one material, they might take a single class, they might take a whole semester of classes but they want to put together their curriculum to grow their way. Oftentimes these people found in different jobs that are more along the creative lines, such as entrepreneurship, arts, music, things like that. So there's a couple of famous autodidacts for those of you who were not aware of them. So Leonardo da Vinci, Julian Assange, Abraham Lincoln, Charles Dickens, Ernest Hemingway, Eddie Van Halen, Jimi Hendrix. So Sure, you can see there quite a few interesting names. I just kind of randomly chose them. There was so many names to choose from, but the truth is a lot of the highly educated people that are in any of these creative jobs, when it comes to creative writing, creative singing, all this stuff, they are constantly studying to master their practice, whether it be a certain instrument or it be a certain talent. So they really craft in their mastery and their continuing instead of just doing it the way that everyone does, which is to go to a school, to go to a thing and to just look to get a 100, they're all the time challenging themselves. They're, they're taking everything on role wise to themselves versus sitting back and saying, okay, well, we'll figure it out as we go. Cause as long as I get a 100 in this class, I'm smart, I'm educated and I'm gonna be fine. I don't have to worry about anything further than just making sure that I get this 100. So a lot of times the 100 mentality is something that runs deep in quite a few people. Uh, it's definitely, to me, a big character flaw for a lot of people because they go to school, they get 100s, but then they come out to the real world where not everything works like answer A, B, C, D. Sometimes there's variables, there's different things that can happen that changes the scenario at a moment's notice. And for the people who are spending a lot of time just following the you know 100 type setting where you're in school, they struggle a lot when things change because they're like, it's not supposed to do that. It's supposed to be fixed. It's supposed to just be this or that. And my education should get me there. So why is education so important? Well, no matter whether you're an autodidact or you're someone who loves school, there's certainly no wrong way to do it. If you're the person who loves school, just don't get into that 100 mentality. Don't get into that. I'm just trying to satisfy what they want me to do. Explore on your own time as well. Make sure to take time to, to follow your passions. 
But education is important in so many ways. Well, number one, struggle. The more educated you are, the less you struggle in life, period, hands down. If you know how to change a tire on a car, you get a flat tire, you can change your own tire. You don't have to sit there and struggle and wait for a tow truck. If you know how to, say, pick up a shovel correctly, you don't have to worry about a blown out back. If you know how to do anything, it's useful in another place. Well, that is so important in the idea of high net worth individuals. So next week, we're going to talk about the 40 hour myth, which is the idea that for 40 hours a week, you can sell your time, and you're suddenly going to be rich versus what it really takes. And one of the big key elements that we're going to be talking about right there would be the idea of education. And the idea of if I read a book right now, and it teaches me one item to save 10 minutes a day, at the end of the year, I have 3650 extra minutes that I can do something with. Now, the book didn't take me nearly that to read. So I actually have a net gain by having taken in a book, even though it seemed like I took a downtime to have read said book. Education is that leverage. It is that ability to magnify and grow what your worth is. Because the more you know, the more you can earn and demand for your work instead of just being a cog of the wheel that got the 100, that got the professor job, that just fell into the place that they told them to and just fell into line. That's the difference between setting yourself free. So as entrepreneurs, I think it's really important to learn that if you're not an autodidact, you really want to become one. And what you want to do is realize that if your job or your career path, if you're not passionate about it, it may be a good time to think about something different because this is where we start really taking it to the next level in any industry because we are going to end up kind of magnifying what we're doing. So embracing your auto, uh, your inner autodidact. So everyone has one. And just a lot of times we've been forced and molded into one shape, right? We need to meet what society needs of us, what the demands are on us, we get a follow. But this is self-employment. This is entrepreneurship. So we actually don't have to do that. We have the ability to do what we love. So when you find what you love, you're going to find that you'll love learning about it. You'll love the whole thing and you'll pursue the subject to the highest level. When people work in a career path or a business that they love, they find themselves kind of always working, but they don't really feel like it's work. Say myself, I look at offers all night long, every night doesn't bother me whatsoever. I'm sitting on the couch with a smile on my face, looking at these big numbers and checking it out and seeing how it goes. That's what happens when you work in your passion and you embrace your inner autodidact because I've studied the offers so long and so hard that it's not a big burden to me to look them over because I've done my whole studies from the beginning of getting into real estate because I enjoy hearing all about that. So now, how can you get others to embrace their inner autodidact? So this is one where far too often, whether it be your own children, your friends, your family, we're all trying to social influence each other. We're trying to influence decisions. We're telling people, you know, I hear often people going to get into real estate and they're like, well, you know, my mom and my dad said, and people put in this negative mindset type thing. So in order to get other people to embrace their inner autodidact, you have to accept people for who they are and love them for their passions, love them for what they're passionate about and guide them towards their passions, not steer them away from them. Just because it's not your passion doesn't mean it's that not their passion. I have plenty of friends that like things that are different than me, but we still get along and we still have a great time together. But what I don't like to see is when you don't, you and I'm sure we all know somebody that does it, but the person that's always trying to shape everybody else. They're always trying to fix everybody else's life and everything. So the people who help other people become more of an autodidact and really take on what they enjoy in business will be people that are very freeing on the mind. Like they're, they're very creative with you. They, when you say, um, I'm going to hire 15 people this year, they don't go, well, that sounds pretty risky. Do you have the money for it? They're the type of person that goes, Oh, that's cool. You must be growing. What's going on. So embracing it and chasing it is really the name of the game in entrepreneurship. You know, oftentimes when you think about what is an entrepreneur, it really comes down to one key element that's different about our lives than most other lives. And that is the need to make decisions all the time that heavily influence our entire life, our entire being, 
and we need to make those decisions fast. Most people's decision making is in the shopping cart, is in, you know, where do I stop and get food? Whereas an entrepreneur's life, the moment you're off one thing, you're on another thing and you're making decisions that sometimes affect you immediately, sometimes affect you multiple years down the line. Everything from signing leases to doing purchase orders, to creating inventory, to shipping, we're always doing stuff. So the more educated we become, the more that we embrace our autodidact and their autodidact, the more that we're gonna find the people around us being successful. You are what you surround yourself by, but you also can help because you are one of the people surrounding other people. So the more you start giving, the more you start embracing others, the more they're gonna start embracing you. And through the circle of giving, you're gonna do very well. So how does how's this training directly affect my bottom line? It's like, what, 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 what can we do with this? Really, it's all about one thing. It's about getting that education. It's about getting the education to save the time to do the process right from the beginning. Struggling forever is one of the biggest things that kills a lot of type A personalities. Be okay with admitting that you don't know everything. Be okay with reading the same material written by two different people. Be okay with the idea of looking for answers versus looking for the solution. You're looking for answers, but the solution probably will never exist. The solution will always be changing. But if you can put all the right answers together, you're going to find the solution for that unique problem at that unique time. In entrepreneurship, like I mentioned, it's definitely a lot more of the name of the game is making decisions. So solutions, they might work today, but they're not gonna work every day. So chase those answers, find out exactly what you need to for your own industry and be willing to enjoy it, get into it. And if you can't, I would probably suggest you think about a new business line because if it's young, I mean, if you're doing it, you've been there for a long time, hey, you're probably not gonna change. But if you're young, you're just starting out and you're doing something you're not passionate about, I can guarantee you in a few years, it'll feel even worse. And you're better off today to start working on that segue to the next thing than to sit into a flip-flop because you can waste a lot of years before you make the decision you knew you should have made. So thank you so much for joining me today for this series on autodidactism. Next week, we're gonna talk about the 40-hour myth. So the 40-hour myth goes over a lot about the idea of selling your time as units and where it can take you versus the idea of entrepreneurship and where it can take you. I like to go over this one a lot because there's a lot of people on the fence of whether they want to get rid of their 40 hour job and become an entrepreneur or not. But also I always remind people that it certainly isn't for everybody because part of the 40 hour myth is that we work way more than 40 hours in self-employment. And I know there's a lot of books out there about how they grew faster or whatever. Um, Okay, well, they got very lucky because most people need a lot of hard work to get there. So after that, we're going to go over self-reliance and then we'll be moving into module five. We skip over a week. I'll be gone to a sales training. But after that, we're going to do new business concepts, talking about automation, outsourcing locally and hiring with precision. And then we'll be doing the commencement in May. If you're looking to find me on the internet, you can find me on all these different socials. Also, I have a podcast, Real Facts on Real Estate for Real Estate Industry Professionals, looking to buy, sell, and help people with the whole process of owning homes and everything about homes, as well as home ownership, which is about buying, selling, and owning homes from the consumer side of things, everything from looking over offers to how to go to an open house and anything in between that, as well as stuff about actual care of the home. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Here's my information here. I'm available all the time to you guys. Love to talk to any of you if you had any questions. Also, if you're looking for business consulting, then feel free to reach out to me over here and we'd be happy to help you with thoughts consulting as well.